Today I'll show you how to create the visual effect that you're seeing on the screen now in Lightworks Video Editor. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back party people. Today we're gonna do something just a little bit different. We're gonna do a Lightworks tutorial and Lightworks is the video editor that I use to edit and upload all of my YouTube videos. It is a video editor application that you can use and export video up to 720p for free. Today we're going to talk about a visual effect that you see across the internet. It's very popular on videos where portrait mode footage has been captured either from a phone or some other device and incorporated into a longer video edit that is in the 16 by 9 layout. That effect is basically a method to eliminate those vertical black bars that you see on both sides of the portrait mode video and then include something interesting in the background like a copy of that video that's blurred out and playing in the background. I'm going to show you how to create that visual effect in Lightworks by blending a copy of the video into another copy of the video using mask, therefore giving you that portrait overlay look across a blurry background. So I'm going to take my mug off of the screen because I know it can be distracting. So let's get to it. So first, when you launch Lightworks, this is what the application looks like. Now, if your layout does not look like my layout, one of the things that you want to check is go up to the gear icon in the top right corner, click and go down to project layout. And you want to make sure your project layout is set to flexible. In my opinion, that gives you the best environment to edit video. So now we're going to create a new project. I'm just going to call it test blur. All right, first we want to import some footage and that will import the video into our project space. And if we double click on that and play it, you can see here that we have some portrait mode footage. All right, so now that we have the video imported, I'm going to create a new sequence. All right, so now that we've got our new sequence, created. I'm just going to drag this clip down into the sequence here and move it over. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the clip and uh, notice that the black bars do not show up in this particular view. So what we want to make sure we do is come down to our clip and in, and this is if you're using Lightworks 2020.1 or greater or one of the beta releases, it will auto view in portrait 60 frames per second based on the footage that you imported. We're just going to select the mode that we want to be in. So 1080p 60 frames and notice that now we have those black bars on both sides of our portrait captured video. The way we're going to achieve this visual effect is actually using a blend of the portrait footage along with a zoomed blurred version of the same footage. So what we need to do is add another video track. So I'm going to go to tracks, add video, and we have an additional video track. We're not going to be too concerned with the audio at this point in time. So I'm going to drag that same clip just over top here. And now we have two video clips, uh, V1 and V2. And we have a stereo paired audio track of A1, A2. I'm going to choose the V2 track to be my main track. And by main track, I mean that is going to be our uh, blurred background track. You could choose either video track. You just have to be aware of the effect that you're going to be adding and which tracks you're adding them to. In the meantime, I'm going to disable the V1 track by clicking on it. And you can see it grayed out here. If we don't disable the v1 track basically you won't be able to see in your sequence viewer here the changes that you're making uh, to the v2 track i'm going to press the f7 key on my keyboard and this will bring up the node editor all right so this is the node editor view and the node editor allows you to create visual effects so the way that the node editor works is as you pull an effect over into the node editor you're able to connect the video track outputs into the effect inputs and chain those together. So right now you can see down at the bottom left, we're working from bottom to top. So the flow is going to be from our video tracks up. So let's uh, remove these and you can do that by right clicking and selecting remove. 
Our next step is to do the digital zoom, and we're going to do that digital zoom by using a 2D DVE. I'm going to drag the 2D DVE effect onto the node editor, and the 2D DVE will allow us will allow us to scale that video or digitally zoom that video in to cover the entire layout. So I'm going to click on the node connector on V2 and drag it up to the foreground of the DVE. Then I'm going to right click on the DVE and click settings and that's going to bring up a new menu. Um, so we're going to scroll down here to the scale and we're going to select the, we're going to click on the master here and we're just going to zoom in on this image until it covers the entire screen with no black on each side that looks just about right so we'll close that out and we'll go back to our node editor here notice that we can click on the effect and gray it out and that will disable the effect and if we click on it again it will enable the effect all right so now that we have our background image digitally zoomed covering the entire 16 by 9 layout. Now we're going to actually pull a blur node onto the node editor and we're going to connect the output of the 2D DVE. And by the way, DVE is digital visual effect and the two dimensional digital visual effect allows you to scale position and the size of the, the image. We're just going to grab the node connector and from the output of the two-dimensional DVE, we're gonna take that to the input of the blur. And you can already see our background here is blurred out already. If we click on that node, it will disable that particular visual effect. We click it again and re-enable it. Now, this particular blur is not exactly blurred enough. So I like my blur with just a little bit less detail so that it doesn't take away from the visual focus of the portrait mode video that we're going to have blended in. So I'm going to right click on our blur node, click settings, and I'm going to scroll down to our blur radius slider, and I'm just going to slide that up. And somewhere right, right along there looks good to me. And we'll close that out. Now that we have our background digitally zoomed and blurred, it's time to actually blend these two video tracks together. And we're going to do that using a masked blend. So let's pull the masked blend onto our node editor. So we said V2 track is going to be our foreground. And V1 is going to be our background. And now we need to create a mask. And at this point, I think it's worthy to have a very quick discussion about mask and how masks are used to help you understand how we're going to achieve this visual effect. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my image editor to do a quick demonstration about mask, and we're going to create a mask that will allow us to mask blend our foreground track and our background track, with the background track being the prominent portrait footage. So let's bring up the image editor. The image editor that I use by choice is GIMP. It's an open source, uh, free download uh, image editor that has tons of functionality. All right, so I have GIMP opened and I opened two images as layers as you can see here. I have my bottom layer, which is this image here and also the top layer, which is an image of this person ice skating. So so what I want to try to do is just create a simple rectangle around this person uh, ice skating here. And I want to include that in my background image here. So I'm going to create a new layer here. So we'll do new layer and uh, I'm going to call it mask. And I'm just going to uh, Click my rectangle select and just very crudely put a rectangle around this person. And then we're going to do fill with foreground color or fill with background color, which is black. Now, it's important to have a discussion about black and white and the purpose in a mask. Black is used as a full transparency mask, meaning Portions of the image that are covered by the color black will actually be transparent and portions of the image that are 
covered by white will be hidden. So what we want to do is just uh, fill our background now with this white color. So I'm just going to choose the bucket select here and just fill that in. All right, so now I'm just going to drag my image up because what I want is this person actually um, displaying through the uh, layer. So the order of the layer here, I just dragged my ice skating picture up so that when I add the mask to this, it's going to display through the layer below it, which is this person uh, ice skating here. So what I'm going to do now is just add a layer mask. Now I'm going to go up to my mask, do an edit copy, and then I'm going to select my layer mask here. I'm just going to paste that in. Then I'm going to merge it down and unclick the mask picture. And now what we see is we have this person in ice that person ice skating included in our image. All right, now I'm just going to select my paintbrush and with black color selected, I'm just going to make some squigglies here just to show you that it doesn't matter uh, what you do. Whatever is in black will actually mask through if you're using the uh, black full transparency mask. So I'm just going to add my layer mask back and I'm going to copy this mask into our little mask and paste it merge it down and display the layer here and you can see the mask here already activated and then as we pull our background image in this blue background would be equivalent to our blurred and stretched background and this would be the equivalent of the portrait video that we wanted to uh, mask through so that's a quick demonstration on how masks work knowing that let's create a mask for our video so i'm going to select new and since our video is in a 1920 by 1080 layout i'm going to create a new image here and i'm just going to grab the uh and i'm just going to add some guides real quick I'm going to add a horizontal at 50% and then a vertical at 50% as well. And that's just going to give me uh, a good center for my rectangle. So I'm just going to choose our rectangle here. And this rectangle is going to be the rectangle that masks through our portrait mode video. Uh, don't be too concerned about how wide it is at this point. What we want to do is just create, we have a little bit of adjustability in the image node property that we're going to add to include this mask in, in our Lightworks video editor. And I'll show you how that works. So we try to center it and we're just going to make it full screen around. And now that we have a select going, I'm just going to fill it with the foreground color. All right. So then I'm going to take my bucket fill and I'm just going to fill background here with white all right and if we have a full black transparent mask here so anything within this black rectangle will display as transparent and anything in the white on the sides will be uh, invisible so let's export this as a PNG file and I'm just going to call it Lightworks mask test put it in a folder that is somewhat vaguely familiar to us so we don't lose it all right we have that exported so now we're going to go back to our lightworks editor and i'll show you how to use and apply this mask all right so now we're back in lightworks so we have our background stretched and we have it blurred as you can see here in the sequence editor then we have our v1 track which is going to be our portrait mode video so what we want to do now is mask out these black bars we've already created our mask but we're going to drag the image node onto our node editor then we're going to connect it to the mask of our mask blend then we're going to right click on our image mask blend now we need to assign the image that we just created in our image editor as our mask to actually blend these two tracks together so first we have to go back and import that mask in that we just created so i'm going to go back to my folder and select light 
Lightworks mask test, the one we just created, import into our project space. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. And so now when we go back to our node editor, we right click on our image node, click settings, and we're going to scroll down to the image field and we're going to choose the file that we just imported. And that's going to be our mask. We also need to remember that we had our V1 track disabled just to see what we were doing in the visual effects that were assigned to our V2 track. So we want to come back and re-enable our V1 track by clicking on it. And immediately you can see that now we have this uh, blurred version uh, background with our portrait footage in the middle here. And what I'm going to do is go back into our image settings and show you how you can play around with the size of the mask. So right click on your image node, click settings, scroll down to your image selection field, and you want to look at your scale and play around with the master scale here and see you have some leeway here in your in your bar. So that's why it wasn't too important to get exactly the same size. So we're going to scale these so it just covers the black area and our footage displays through. So just right there is perfect and we'll close that out for this video purpose sake i'm gonna just remove our audio re-enable our video tracks and give this a play all right if we play our footage you can see here that we have our portrait mode video displaying through our mask and then we have our background that has been blurred and digitally zoomed so what we're going to do now is actually show you a different mask. So this was just a standard vertical mask, but I'll show you that you can create any type of mask uh, that you want. And uh, I've already got another mask created. I'm just going to import into my workspace here. And see, let's go down. So this is a uh, box with a star in the inside. I'm just going to import that into the workspace. So we'll go back to our node editor, right click, on our image click settings scroll down to our image selection here and in the image we're just change that from the black rectangle to our new mask and you can see our new mask is already in our sequence viewer here now that we've created our visual effect let's export our video and see the final results all right so here it is our footage and we can see our vertical black bars have been eliminated and we have our portrait footage prominent all right, that will do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, you know what to do. Skill up and ride, van up and go. And just remember, everybody needs a plan B.